Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make an FPS battle horde game in Unity and welcome to episode 1. In this series we'll be designing and building a game with the mechanics of a first person shooter game combined with a customizable horde style and elements of a battle royale game. It's designed with you, the viewer, in mind, and the great thing is you don't need any prior knowledge of Unity or any programming knowledge to even do this series because you'll be taught it all by myself. So the aim is for absolute beginners, as well as people who've actually used Unity and would like to learn a little bit more and learn different techniques, perhaps even see how I would do things and then compare them to themselves, how they would do the techniques for themselves. So you'll be taken from a beginner to an intermediate level of learning throughout this series on both Unity development and programming. And speaking of programming, we'll be doing C Sharp using Visual Studio, which comes bundled with Unity anyway. And if you'd like to see anything in particular, please don't be afraid to comment. So finally, this series will work in all versions of Unity, as long as you're using something from at least 2015. Some menus may look a little bit different, and if you're using Unity 2020 or 2021 or whatever in the future, uh, essentially things may be a little bit different, but everything will still function as normal. So, here we go guys. I haven't actually done a proper introduction since Unity changed to this whole hub thing in I think it was about 2018. So I thought I'd spend a few minutes getting people up to scratch. And if you've followed me for quite some time, you'll know that generally I've used Unity 5, I've used 2017, 2018 and 2019 as well. So I've used a lot of versions and I've seen many changes and things do change in Unity. It can be a little bit daunting for uh, beginners, but don't worry at all. So Basically, when you download Unity from right here, it may look a little different for you because they change the site all the time. Um, I'm not going to teach you how to download Unity. I'm sure you know how to download it. So we'll assume you've already downloaded the hub. You'll be presented with a little something like this. Your installs may look empty, but that's completely fine. So all you would need to do is go to Add and then select a version of Unity to install. So you can have multiple versions of Unity installed via the hub. You want to look for versions which do not have A or B in the release. These are alphas and beta versions. They can be used, but they can be buggy. They can be a little bit unstable, so you may want to avoid them. I tend to stick with whatever the best release, uh, stable release currently is. So in this case, if uh, you're doing it on the exact date I'm doing it now, you would use this version right here, 2019.1.7. So all you do is select it and click next, install it, everything you need to do. Once you've got it selected here, you can go to that little menu and click on add modules and you can select all of the modules you need to install. So for example, if you want to build for Android, iOS, uh, WebGL, Windows, you just need to set them there and install them, which is totally fine. So once you have your install set, you then need to create a new project. So if you go to your projects, it won't quite look like this. It'll look empty if you're a brand new at it. You need to click new. Make sure you have the 3D option selected here. You don't need 3D with extras because we'll deal with everything as it comes. And project name, whatever you want to call it. And then location, select where you want to save it and then click on create. You've just created your first Unity 3D project. And after a couple of minutes, you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. This is the Unity default layout. Now it may look a little daunting. This whole engine may look confusing for first timers, but don't worry. It's actually very easy to get used to. Now through the series, I will keep this entire layout the same. I'm going to keep it as a default layout because I actually quite like the default layout, strangely enough. But let's go through each of these sections one by one and discuss what they're for and why they exist. So the hierarchy is a place where we can see assets in text form and we can select them. It's like a list. So for example, we currently have something called main camera and directional light. Let's select main camera. We now have that asset selected in our hierarchy and our scene view. What is the scene view? This is the scene view, the big panel next to it. And you'll see because we've selected it in the hierarchy, it's actually selected here with some little arrows. The X is represented by a red arrow. The Y coordinate is represented by a green. 
and the Z by the blue. So because it's a 3D environment that we are dealing with, we have those three coordinates, X, Y, and Z. It also means that we can click something right here in the scene window and it automatically selects in the hierarchy. So these two panels are directly related. And you'll notice we also have something with a little Pac-Man symbol up here that says game. What is this one? Well, it looks very similar to the scene view, but where's the objects? Where's the things we can select? We can't because this window is where we play the game inside the engine. So if we were to build a game, this is where we'd be able to play it inside the Unity engine. And right now, we can't do anything because there is no real game. There are only two game objects in the scene, which is that main camera and the directional light. So if we actually play something in the game, we have to more than just click it. We can be in the scene view or where, wherever. We just need to press play up here. You'll notice it go dark or darker, and then it'll switch to the game view with this highlighted up here. So if we had a game, we'd be able to play it now. We'd be able to test it. That's what it's handy for, testing, bug checking, all that kind of stuff. So to stop it, you would just press the play button once more. Next along is the asset store. We're not gonna worry about the asset store just now. It's basically exactly what it says. It's a store where you can get some assets for free or paid, whatever. It's not important right now, but we probably will deal with it at some point in the series. The next one along over here is the inspector panel. The inspector panel is where we're able to customize and change everything in a game object. So for example, we have the directional light selected and over here we have two little sections known as components. The first one is transform. The second one is light. Every game object will have a transform component simply because it needs to have a position, a rotation, and a size. That's what each of these represents, the X, Y, and Z. So they correlate with these arrows right here. The next one down is a light component. So obviously because it's a light, that's why we have that there. So we could customize that to a great degree. There's lots of things everywhere all over that, but don't worry at all. Each game object has its own variation. If we go to the main camera, you'll see that there is no light there, obviously because it's not a light. It's because it's a camera, so it has a camera component. And that is how we visually see what is in our game. You can see a little preview there. That preview flows through to the game view as well. So the inspector panel, as I say, it's where you edit a lot of things within Unity itself, or rather game objects itself. Down the bottom, we have the project window, and this is where we store all of our assets. What are assets? Assets are things that we bring into Unity, whether it be a texture, whether it be a model, whether it be a script, whether it be some audio, everything you bring in is classed as an asset. So they are a compilation of various different media types that we can use to build a game. So everything we bring in will be down here at some point. The next one long is the console. The console is not too important right now because we don't really have anything in the scene. But if we have errors or warnings from perhaps a script or something, they will display here in the console and we'll be able to diagnose them and resolve them quite easily. So we can actually move these windows around. I did say earlier that I was going to keep this layout as it is by default because I quite like it. But what if you don't? Well, if you don't, you can always move things around. Let's put the game view down the bottom because we can. So let's drag the tab and place it down there because we can. Let's actually put the console up here because why not? We can put these tabs anywhere we like. We could even put the console over here by the inspector panel and switch between the two. Brilliant. So if you don't like the layout of Unity, you can always do that. Another thing you could do is you can actually detach these tabs themselves. So you could drag this and just make it its own object right there. And you can move that anywhere. If you don't like what you've done, you can always go to window, go to layouts and then select revert factory settings. Or you could select one of the default layouts by chance. Anything you want to, you know, default portrait mobile tool anything at all. And if you like the layout you've got, you can always click on save layout and it will save exactly how it is. So I'm going to place my game view back up there. I'm going to bring my console back down here. So just remember that the whole layout of Unity is customizable. Now let's go into some of these menus at the top. Let's go to file. Here we can add, well, anything 
new scene if we want, a new project if we want. However, if we add a new project, just remember that the one you're dealing with will close down. Just, just make sure to save it. I've made that error a few times. Anyway, build settings is what we want to really take a look at right now. In here, we can see we can add scenes and we can select a platform. Now, I can ask you, what platform do you want to build this game for? Do you want to build it for Universal Windows Platform? Do you want to build it for Android? Well, you can. Anything that you build in Unity can be ported to any supported device, providing you're allowed to. Now, what I mean by that is if we go to PS4, you need a license. So the license required to build for PS4 is something you probably have to pay for. But don't quote me on that one. So most people uh, in, well, for me at least, build uh, for PC or Android, something like that. So if you've built a game and you perhaps want to put it on Android, you would select Android and click on Switch Platform. Now it must be noted that uh, the sooner you do that in your project, switch to platform, the smaller amount of time it will take to switch over to that platform for development. You won't see any change at all within Unity. It'll just be developing for that platform, then you can build it for that platform. Uh, if you do it quite late on in development, it may take a while just to kind of uh, change everything around. So just keep that in mind. At the top, we have scenes in build. What is a scene? A scene, just like it says in the scene view, is an asset that contains all of that information that you've built for one particular level. And you could add the open scenes, which makes us able to actually select those scenes and change them via scripting where, uh, when we get further into development. So this whole scene is actually classed as an asset. If we go to our scenes folder down here in project, you'll see we have sample scene and up here you'll see sample scene.unity. That is the asset we are in right now. So Unity is very object oriented, but that doesn't mean there isn't just as much coding. So there's a lot to deal with and a lot to remember when it comes to building a scene because there is so much that could be in, in a scene, but at the same time, look like there's nothing in the scene at all. So go back to these menus, we have an edit menu, and this is where we can change things like preferences, snap settings, and um, all kinds of different options for our game, as well as, you know, you've got the good old cut, copy paste going on there. Uh, but don't worry about much of these edit uh, sections for now. Next, we have assets where we can create assets and import packages and whatever else. However, that menu is the same as if we right click down here. Game object is where we can insert objects into our scene. You know, just simple game objects like a cube or like a sphere or anything like that. Components where we can add components for any game object and window is where we're able to add the different windows for Unity. For example, I have the asset store right there, which we're going to use. You could always just go to window and click on asset store if you don't have it. So what else is there? Well, we can actually insert those game objects that I spoke about a couple of seconds ago. If I go into game object, 3D object, and let's insert a cube. You'll see over here in the transform component that it is at position, well, some very weird numbers. If we change this to zero, 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 that is now dead center of our scene. So zero, zero, zero is the absolute center of any scene, no matter what. So it's always good to start perhaps at the center and build outwards, depending on what kind of game or level you're building. So let's take a look at a couple of shortcuts which will come in useful. If we hold down our right mouse button, you'll see it turns to an eye and we can move around. We can pivot around on the position we are to take a look. The left mouse button selects things as you would expect. The middle mouse wheel can be used to zoom in or zoom out. However, it can also be used to move around. If we hold it down, it turns to a little hand and we can move around like so. It makes things a little bit easier when we're trying to you know, manipulate and move around in the scene. If we're zoomed out, for example, and we want to get close to the object, we can double click it in the hierarchy and we zoom in quite nicely. It's a very, very handy little thing to know. So let's take a look at these tools at the top, because you may have noticed as I was doing some of that, 
If I held down the right mouse button, you'll see at the very left, top left of your screen now, a little eye icon. And when I let go, it turns back to the hand icon. If I hold down the middle mouse wheel, you'll see it turns to a little spyglass icon. And if I let go, it turns back to the hand. So what are these icons up here? Well, if we select the move tool, which is the hand, we can actually move ourselves around, which was the equivalent of holding down the middle mouse wheel and moving around. The next one is the move tool, and this allows us to move game objects on these axes right here. So let's say we want to move this cube all the way over here. We can actually select the X axis, hold down the left mouse button and move it. We don't like where it is, so let's undo it. Good old Control Z. Next one along is the rotate tool. This allows us to rotate whatever object we have selected. So let's say we want to rotate on the X, but keep an eye up here in the transform component when we do it, particularly this number here. You'll see it automatically changes. Brilliant. And obviously that can be done with any of the axes. Nice and simple, and they'll change there, no problem. So let's undo all of that. And let's actually review what these can be used for. So let's hover the mouse over any particular uh, coordinate, so X, Y, Z, hold left mouse button, and we can move it. Brilliant. We could also manually enter numbers 10, 20, 30. And again, 0, 0, 0. That resets everything. Next one long is the scale tool. We can select and increase size on all three axes. Next one is the rec tool. This isn't particularly useful for 3D objects, but you may find it useful. It's more aimed at uh, 2D objects. So UI, move it around, awesome. And this one is a combination of everything except the rec tool. I don't particularly like this one because I feel there is a bit of error possible, you know, I might do something really silly like that. I didn't mean to do that. So let's undo all of that and set it back to Nope, I didn't want to do that. I don't want to open the Unity manual. I know how to use it, thank you. And there we go. So let's put our camera center as well as the cube. So we can do this with any game object. Uh, the last one there is also customizable. All the versions of Unity don't have that, but don't worry about it at all. We probably won't really use it. We'll use these ones right here. So what else can we do? Well, we can actually play around with the cube to a great degree with just the transform here. We can also minimize. So if we've got a lot of components, we can actually minimize those components and get down to the ones at the bottom. Very handy to know. So if you're a beginner, I recommend playing around with these objects and their transform components. Get yourself used to the layout and the respective panels as well. Even adjust them to how you'd like them to be. I really, really do recommend that. If you want, add in another game object, let's say a sphere. Play around with that, play around with the tools, see what you get to. Next tutorial, we're going to bring in some assets, textures. So we're going to use these textures to manipulate the objects that we have and start to see the graphics of a game come through with materials. So these are key when developing 3D games. Well, any game really. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.